Whoa. I'm releasing a single, you guys. She's American. Six years in LA. Honey, your mother got into some trouble today. You were under arrest on the suspicion of the illegal importation of prescription drugs. They're just painkillers. I promise I will look after Honey. How super amazeballs is this gonna be? <laughs> <laughs> I started to get this picture in my head um, about the time I started hitting middle age and I started to feel like everywhere I went there was a conversation about um, whether or not to have Botox, whether you got something injected in your lips or did a little bit of this or started to wear Spanx or whatever the, uh, although I think that's an any age thing. Um, and I just felt like there was this pressure everywhere on how not to age which felt very um, interesting to me because at the same time I felt like I was quite powerful. I was running a company, I was making a lot of television, I was getting to express myself and at the same time I was sort of being told to shut down. At the same time also I was a mother of two girls and I was very aware of um, the pop music that they were being exposed to on the television and um, the images on Facebook that their friends would have of girls sort of pulling their tops up to get approval, I think. And I felt um, a little disturbed by that, that, that we're still fixated on external rather than internal. And I guess I thought, what would be the funniest way to dramatise that? I'll take someone like me and put her just in a normal existence with the most heightened version of that sort of sexualized young girl that I can think of, which would be a Disney-esque uh, type star uh, on the verge of that and stick him in a house. My Molly, who's, I've kind of got a Molly and Emily who are like a Claire and Harriet in the film. My Molly is not nearly as lippy as Claire. Um, she's, she's really lovely um, actually, but I liked the idea. I actually probably developed Claire more as a means of an antithesis to Honey. Um, I wanted her to be kind of more grungy, smart, sarcastic, as opposed to Honey, who's so much more a child than Claire is. She's so much less developed as a human being than Claire is. And then, so Claire then became that person with me. And I also wanted Caroline just to be constantly nagged at that sort of about her physicality too, and Claire was a good person to, to do that as well. But yeah, I know, I know the mother and daughter relationship pretty well. Well, I guess individually, I, I hope that they each walk away thinking that, thinking that, I hope that they feel better. I hope that they feel better after they've seen the film, to maybe lessen the expectation, um, to, to kind of understand for a second that the construction that we see constantly on Facebook, on Instagram, on television, in the movies, in magazines, the Kardashians, that it's, you know, they're all constructions and underneath we're all just ducks paddling and trying to get by and we're all imperfect but we're all pretty fantastic. We, you never describe a friend going, she's so awesome, she's really thin. You know, you say she's so awesome, she listens to me and she's got a great sense of humour. You know, we don't actually judge people by how they look. We judge ourselves very harshly by how we look. And so I hope women and girls similarly can be released from that. And I hope mothers and daughters, if they're going together, just remember that they love each other and that they, they care mostly about protecting each other and, um, and that they, you know, have a shared experience which they enjoy. Oh totally, I mean we, ha we talk about dark issues I think all the time, you know Upper Middle Bogan is about adoption, um, The Librarians is about intolerance and r racial bigotry, you know, but to otherwise you, you know, make late line, um, you know, w watch Four Corners, otherwise you'd be, you'd ma be making something really dark. Um, and true and sometimes I think comics, people with a comic sensibility, we get very angry about things and we only know how to translate it into funny. And I really love in this film that people are laughing and laughing and then suddenly they stop and you can hear a pin drop and 
they feel kind of affected by something or it's not even as sudden as that, maybe it's a day later. I get quite a few people sort of calling me up or commenting a couple of days, I can't stop thinking about that thing, you know, which is the best compliment as opposed to a movie that you enjoy and then sort of forget as soon as you walk out of there. So I think it's super important to be funny while you're trying to say something deep. You didn't need to get your eyes done. That's coming from someone who looks like they pressed the back of a fork into their face.